Hello, this is Aaron from Deep Dive Discography. Today we are talking to the band Hypermass. How are you guys doing today? Very well, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Good to hear. Um, you guys have a new album coming out in June, so only a couple weeks away. Uh, Empyrean, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the album? Yeah, well, uh, this album has a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, we started the recording process um, about two or three years uh, ago. And um, yeah, we picked right up from where Deviants left off, our uh, last single um, before the album cycle. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, like our writing sessions was kind of, um, it was kind of odd in that, um, Thomas, the other guitarist here, he lives in another city. So every time he's come to, to Trondheim, which is our city, uh, we sat down and, and, and wrote and recorded for about a week. And for every session, there was a new song. Um, so like in between, in between the sessions, we have uh, discovered all this new music, all these new influences. So once every song came out, um, it was pretty clear that it, it it was different from different influences. So that's why every song is um, so different from one another. Uh, so yeah, this this album is very diverse. Yeah. Yeah. So when you listen to the album, you can like clearly hear that uh, we've been through like uh, different music phases. Each one of us, like uh, each time we came back, like I remember one time we all were like really into Tool and like slow buildups and big climaxes. So that's something we wanted to incorporate for one song. But then the next time we were feeling really thrashy. So uh, we made a lot of more like quick stuff and more fast paced. So like every song each time, because of like this was going on for like three or almost four years or something. So that's why like every song is pretty different from each other. But we believe that's a good thing. Uh, it's quite a device, uh, diverse album because of that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, like your your bio uh, basically says for fans of Silosis, Revocation, Gojira, Allegion, Soilwork, which even though there are some similarities between the bands, they are all quite different styles. Right, right. That's just the tip of it, you know. We could go, we, we could <laughs> go all uh, all day with uh, influences, you know. Really, but uh, it, uh, when we when we started out, it was uh, primarily. Um, like uh, that was primarily Allegiant, Revocation, the Black Dollar Murder, stuff like that, you know, um, tech, deathy stuff. Uh, we were really like sort of painted in, into a corner with uh, our, our musical style back then. Um, but, you know, as time progressed, just uh, broadened our musical senses in a way. And so did the music. So, yeah. So this is your first full-length release. You have one EP before this. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. What what was kind of the main difference between writing a full-length versus an EP? One thing was more material, you know, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Yep. Um, but um, the other thing was when we wrote the EP, uh, we all uh, we went to a, we went to a, like. Um, I don't know if, what you call it. Uh, we call it in, in Norway. We call it a 4K school day. Like a, a, it's a, it's a school. Uh, it's basically a free year, but it's it's a school. It's a school of music. Um, it's sort of like a school that you take before you uh, are when you're done with like um, uh, when you're before you go and study like a field that you're into. Then you can have like a free year. It's called when you can like focus on a hobby. So there's yeah. like you could take football for example, but we chose to take. Uh, uh sound engineering exactly this rock high school yeah so uh, when like we were already at the school so we were jamming out every day um like yeah, we can we could jam out five six hours every day you know so in those sessions in those hours we we came up with a lot of material which uh, then uh, was comprised of the uh, what would be the material of the of the ep so we had access to a full studio there, so we can uh, we could like record as we go, you know, uh, as we wrote. So uh, 
that's how we came up with the EP. It, with the following, it was more, it was more challenging, um, mostly because we were living in different cities, you know. Yeah. And yeah. not really any practice space to like try and come up with songs there. So that's like a big difference between the EP and the full length because the EP was written mostly like in a practice space. Uh, the new album is uh, completely written like on a computer uh, by us sitting there and like analyzing every part and like for months or years, I mean. Mm, exactly, yeah. So yeah, you basically just, ha you had a lot more time to mull over everything that was, that was going into this one. That's right, yeah. 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 So obviously you guys come from Norway. Um, Norway does have quite a big metal scene generally. Not mm -hmm. always, it doesn't always have the best reputation because of some of the stuff that happened in the past. But, uh, what's, <laughs> yeah. but what's the metal scene in Norway like nowadays? I would say that the metal scene has broadened, you know, before it was... Um, it had a lot of different bands before too, but primarily it was black metal that was the domineering, uh, dominating uh, genre in uh, in Norway. But right now you have like bands like Leprous, for instance, uh, which is a big big prog metal band. Um, you have bands like Blood Red Throne, which is uh, internationally known, a big death metal band. So uh, you have all these other bands that break that break out of Norway. Uh, but which really aren't black metal at all. Although we really have, we have, I would assume that we have still the most, um, the, the most um, prevalent black metal scene in, in the world uh, still. But uh, we have a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of diverse and different bands, different type of bands, yeah. And do and you find when it comes to like concerts around, around the area, you tend to see the same people at various kinds of genres. Like you'll see the same people at thrash shows and black metal shows and death metal shows. Yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. Well, like black metal has, um, it has a special type of crowd, which is like, uh, a lot of people tend to uh, listen to uh, all sorts of metal, but with, within black metal, I, I think, um, I think there's a lot of people that only listen to black metal, you know, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah. Um, I think that's the only subgenre you find actually that where where there's um, the people only listens to that uh, subgenre. Yeah. yeah, and that's definitely not what your music is built for, being based around so many different influences. Yeah, and uh, we really um, expect to get both. Um, uh, like both positive and negative criticisms of, of these projects, you know, because it is so like um, different from one what would uh, one would expect, you know, from Norway. So, yeah, yeah, because I mean, somebody can come into this uh, based on your last single behind a Leviathan, and yeah. be ex and basically be expecting mm -hmm. that. But when you kick off the album, it is almost nothing nothing no. like it <laughs> no 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 yeah it's the only song that sounds like that <laughs> but yeah, that, no. that is kind of the tone of the whole album is each song is is its own universe yeah it's its own that's personality right. absolutely that's right we never made the, song, the same song twice you know so this is a self-released album obviously that takes a lot a lot more effort you don't have somebody else pushing everything for you what is oh, the yeah. next step for you guys are you guys going on tour hopefully hopefully <laughs> we're going on tour uh the situation right now is um we're still waiting for uh confirmation that um, we have uh, like from a, a drummer um because the the drummer that um, was on the al album was only a session drummer he had other plans and stuff like that, so um, we uh, we have struggled the, the last uh, yeah six months or so with uh, with getting a, a full time drummer. But we're looking forward to to jamming with the uh, with the guys soon, and uh, hopefully it's, it works out and uh, we go on tour as soon as possible. Yeah, 
it turns out that finding a drummer is a lot harder than it sounds like. <laughs> There's few of them out there that can play like uh, that's like uh, yeah. There's few of them out there. Like yeah, really, like every drummer we know plays in a bunch of projects. Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, all the good drum- drummers are busy, you know. That's yeah. always the joke, isn't it? Every drummer you can find is already in five bands. That's right. Yep. <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. So when you do manage to get out on the road, which songs are you most looking forward to to playing live? Oh, man. New material. Yeah. Absolutely new material. Uh, I looking, I'm lo- really looking forward to the new singles that's been released. Those are going to be, uh, uh, they're, they're like made for live playing, I feel like. And also yeah. there's, a, uh, there's actually a little bit of, a, I don't know if you should say this, but there's a single coming out on Friday now, next Friday. Yeah. We can say that. That one is my favorite on the whole album. Uh, it's a really fast one. Uh, that's going to be amazing to play live. And uh, yeah, what about you, Sindra? I'm looking forward to the fast numbers, like the one you said. And uh, I also really look forward to uh, to playing a cold so- uh, song called uh, "Dissect and Serve" to dissect and serve from the, uh, oh, yeah. the album. Also, um, the last song I love the last song, "Mother Dome," and um, yeah. I, I reckon we would we will play all, the whole album when we first uh, go out. You know, the set list will probably be comprised of, uh, uh, if not all, uh, like most of the songs on the album, plus Deviants maybe. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to uh, to to yeah going out on the road generally. Actually. Yeah, so obviously you guys, the EP was 2015, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So obviously it, it has been... Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's, there's mm-hmm. been a good chunk of time. Uh, what are some of the main changes for you guys, bas- basically in terms of influence and style that you found going into this album that uh, didn't didn't go into that one? Oh, man. Um most of the influences which came into this album, the influences we hadn't, I, I don't even think we had heard of them in uh, in 2015 when we when we made the EP, you know? Like back then we were really locked into this um, uh, tech deathy, thrashy type of music, you know? Um, Revocation, Black Dahlia, Allegiance, Alosis, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think it has just come naturally, you know. Um, I even had have some periods when I don't listen to metal at all, you know. Uh, I listen to a lot of other stuff, and uh, even that um, comes in to the uh, to the album, you know. Um, there's a there's a part on the album which is inspired by uh, like Radiohead and stuff, you know. So it doesn't have to be metal at all, actually. <laughs> so yeah. How about you, Thomas? The biggest difference between Cloud of Visions and the new album. Um, it's what Sindra said, actually. It's pretty much that uh, at that period, it was more like melodic, technical death metal we were shooting for. Uh, there's actually been a long time since I've listened personally to that kind of music right now. It's been... Um, my taste has been like all over the place and the same for the rest of the guys. So it's just a, it's just a result of like changing, like aging and changing your taste over time. So it's, yeah, right now it's like uh, the genre is all over the place. So uh, the new one is kind of like, yeah, each song is for like, most people will find something they would like because the inspirations are from everywhere on the new album. That has always been the goal, you know. We have always strived to be um, original and and uh, come up with new type of uh, a new type of genre, basically. Like um, the the my my favorite bands, uh, like for instance, uh, Anana Thrak, you know, which uh, which genre are they? You know, are yeah. they grindcore, black metal? Who knows? You know, it's extreme metal. 
but it's uh, it, it's fucking awesome, you know. So that's all that matters to us. To yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's better to not uh, could pinpoint um, a subgenre, you know. Definitely, yeah. Because like like you said, there's just there is so much going on in the album where somebody will find something, and there are little bits here and there that will pull yeah. people in as well. Exactly. Yeah. And that's obviously one of the biggest thing that works for the singles as well, is they are different from each other. They they give a very different idea of what the album is going to be like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that can be exciting, you know. That that, that can be exciting for, for people, you know. Yeah, definitely. So when you get to go out on the road, who are some of your bucket list bands? Who would you like to go on tour with? Oh man. That's a good question, <laughs> dude. Um, I think um, maybe a, it, may, may, it may be a genre crash, but um, I've always wanted to tour with the Cattle Decapitation, actually. That's um, a good one. That would be super fun. <laughs> yeah, that would be super fun. Uh, man. <laughs> So just, I'm not really uh, sure, actually. Yeah, like um, yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure. Yeah, like um, I always said the Black Dog Murder. Like, I'm know, I'm actually gonna say happen. something like maybe like something in the direction of hardcore band. That seems like a really fun group of guys to uh, play shows with. And like uh, yeah. Like, I love the new album by Turnstile and uh, Comeback Kid. Same, Those yeah. guys would be actually really cool. And I, I think it would uh, maybe new match. New what? album from uh, Malevolence tomorrow. Oh, those yeah, guys. Malevolence. Yeah, those guys too. That's actually a good one. Ma- Malevolence, That would those would be awesome guys to tour, tour with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, like, like you said, it may not match exactly, but the the music on this album could definitely if you pick and choose the right songs and put them in the right order it would definitely fit into that kind of show yeah 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 definitely absolutely yeah there are some hardcore inspirations on the new album so it would fit I and they just yeah. pick the the nice fast and heavy songs when you if you manage to go with cattle yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 no yeah. ballads <laughs> no ballads <laughs> So can you talk a little bit on the album cover? Um, there, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, oh, yeah it is. Um, we uh, first uh, we did uh, contact our old, uh, like uh, the guy who did uh, the album cover for Cloud Editions. He was really because we always thought he was really was really talented, really good. Um, but after a while, when we wrote them more, uh, more and more songs, we reckon that uh, it wasn't a very good fit for the music uh, because we had changed so much. Um, so we searched out uh, like Costin uh, uh, Chirano. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm butchering this guy's name, but Costin uh, from uh, Argentina, I think. Um, he is. Uh, he has done a bunch of bands um and we were re- really impressed with his uh, with his drawing style um and it did fit the music uh, very well because it wasn't as um um you know it wasn't as uh, like modern tech that he type uh, stuff um it was more like um yeah i think the imagery really reflected the music uh, very well. So um, we we went with him and uh, we uh, we pitched this like the album has an overarching concept, a theme, and we pitched that to him. Um, and I think that's uh, he really liked to work that way because uh, he said, "Oh man, this uh, this sounds great. I'm really looking forward to working on this project." And uh, yeah, he, yeah, because we did not really have any idea of what it would look like before we contact contacted him. That was sort of the problem for us that we didn't have anything sp- special in mind. We only had like a concept to go, uh, yeah, uh, to like build from. 
And we sent that to Kasten and he really like got inspired from it. So that's the result. He made that like just from reading the concept. Yeah. Without yeah. any other input from us. Yeah, because the first draft we, we got from, from our, our old guy, then we had a, a, an image uh, in our heads, which we wrote down uh, to him, like, uh, can you do this? Can you do this? Uh, and I think we really put it put him in a, uh, in a box, you know, um, that uh, wasn't really, uh, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the best thing to do, I think, because uh, when we just, uh, when we just described the concept to Kostin, uh, he can, you know, work freely, work within his own thoughts and, uh, and come up with something that, uh, yeah, reflects the, yeah, the theme of the album. Yeah. Perfect. Well, last but not least, do you have any messages you'd like to uh, give out to the fans listening in? Yeah. Uh, we already an announced it uh, <laughs> right uh, like two minutes ago. So new single <laughs> next Friday. It's called Equalizer. Uh, it's a fast one. It's a, it's a hard one. So be, be on the lookout for that. Uh, and the album so arriving in three or two weeks, sorry. Two weeks, yeah, on the third. On the third, June 3rd. So mark your calendars and then, um, yeah, buy an album, buy a CD, buy a vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't announced that, but there's also going to be a vinyl. So we're going to sell <laughs> CD and vinyl really soon now. That's right. So That's be right. on the lookout for that. Giving away um, all the secrets. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And where can everyone find your merch and everything? Uh, we're going to put it up on Bandcamp from, from the beginning. Maybe we'll move on to some sort of websites soon. But yeah, it's going to be on Bandcamp for the time being. Perfect. Well, Thomas and Sindra, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been Hypermass talking to us with their new album. Empyrean coming out the 3rd of June, just like they said. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you for having us, Aaron. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah.